Steel Pier in Atlantic City, New Jersey is one of several boardwalk parks along the Jersey Shore. I visited this park for the first and only time in 2020, but I don't think I'll be planning a return trip anytime soon. In this review, I will discuss my thoughts about Steel Pier and if I think it's worth visiting. As the name may suggest, Steel Pier is one of the Jersey boardwalks that actually extends out over the ocean on a man-made pier. And this setting is the park's biggest strength. Several rides either go right up alongside the edge of the pier, or even extend out over the edge. And Steel Pier is surprisingly old. The pier originally opened in 1898, and this pier has seen several changes over the years. For its first seven decades, the pier operated as a hybrid amusement park and entertainment complex. The pier was also damaged several times, in 1904 by a storm, and then by fires in 1924 and 1969. At its peak, the pier measured 2,298 feet or 700 meters in length. In 1978, the pier was closed due to declining tourism in Atlantic City and it was instead used for storage. But four years later in 1982, the pier suffered another fire. When Trump Entertainment purchased the land to build the Taj Mahal in the late 1980s, the deal includes Steel Pier. The entire pier was rebuilt, shortened to just 1,000 feet or 300 meters in length, and it reopened as an amusement park in 1992. There were proposals to build condos, hotels, or casinos on the site of Steel Pier, but those never came to fruition. And in 2011, Steel Pier was officially sold to the Catanoso family for $4.25 million after they had been leasing the pier for amusement rides over the past two decades. This gave the park and the Catanoso family some much needed stability. Steel Pier is located directly across the street from the Hard Rock Casino, which was formerly the Taj Mahal. If you want to take your chances with street parking, there are several side streets nearby, but parking seemed very hard to come by, so I decided to park at the Hard Rock Casino for convenience. And one thing to know if you plan to visit Steel Pier is that this park has a rolling closing time, dictated by the day's attendance. I originally tried visiting the park in 2017. The park was scheduled to be open until midnight, but when I arrived at 10.30, Steel Pier was already closed for the night. So if this park is a priority for you, I'd make sure to arrive well before closing time if you think crowds may be light on the day you intend to visit. Like many of the boardwalk parks, Steel Pier has free admission. But unlike many of the boardwalk parks, Steel Pier actually has a grand and formal entranceway. A lot of boardwalk parks don't usually have a formal entrance like this. Usually the most you get is a small archway as you enter under the pier. For Steel Pier, you enter under this giant building and its sensory overload on the inside due to the alleyway having arcade games, food stands, and carnival games. While Steel Pier may have been free to enter, it will cost you dearly if you want to ride anything. On select weekdays, the park seems to offer a wristband that costs upwards of $45 for adults. Or you can pay per ride any day. Each ticket costs $1.50 as of 2020, and each ride costs 4 to 8 tickets. So you'll be paying $6 for a kiddie roundabout, $9 for your average flat ride, and $12 for the Crazy Mouse roller coaster. If you only want the coaster credits, tickets are the way to go. It will cost you $21 to ride both the coasters. If you want to spend an afternoon riding several rides, try to visit on a day the wristband is available. I visited on a weekday afternoon, so the park was not overly busy. Despite that, the operators were fast to load and dispatch the rides. That's probably because most people were paying by ride, so it incentivized the park to maximize their throughputs. In terms of friendliness, the attendants felt a bit cold, but I didn't have any negative experiences with any of the individual employees. Now let's talk about the rides. Steel Pier is home to a historic spinning wild mouse. Crazy Mouse is actually the first Revershawn spinning mouse. This mouse opened in 1997 at Wildwood's Dinosaur Beach, and it was relocated to Steel Pier in 1999 after Dinosaur Beach closed. And this coaster is definitely rough around the edges. You have these ragtag, sun-faded signs alongside the ride. The vehicles collide with each other in the station. And best of all, there was an employee atop the station trying to fix the broken on-ride camera while the ride was still cycling. Nothing you'll see at Six Flags. Now on to the biggest issue with this coaster. 
Some of the cars spin, as they should, but others do not. And that's an issue when this is a spinning wild mouse. I don't think this was intentional, so if you're a fan of spinning, I'd be careful which vehicle you board, because these mice are really awkward if you don't get them spinning. But if you get a car that spins properly, this is a solid mouse with a great view of the water thanks to its placement. One final thing I want to know about this coaster is that it does not allow single riders, a restriction you will not find anywhere else on the website, so just keep that in mind if you're visiting alone. The other coaster is the Locomotion, an SBF Visa Kitty Coaster consisting of just two helixes. It's a pretty dull ride as far as kitty coasters go. But I think the most interesting thing about this ride is that it actually had to be temporarily taken down in 2017 so Steel Pier could build the wheel, their massive 227 foot tall observation wheel. And I think that wheel is the star of the park. It's a 15 minute ride giving two laps and the views are spectacular. You get a bird's eye view of the whole park, the ocean, and the Atlantic City skyline. But one odd thing about this ride is that it does not accept the standard Steel Pier ride tickets. You have to buy a special ticket for the ride at the entrance, which cost me $10 on the day I visited. I was actually shocked it cost less than Crazy Mouse because some of these observation wheels cost considerably more than just $10. Beyond that, you have a mix of flat rides. The adult ones are placed towards the back of the park, while the kids ones are placed towards the entrance. You have your usual staples like a swinging ship in a Himalaya, but the two most notable flat rides were the Freedom Flyer Inverting Frisbee and the Mixed Skyscraper, since both those rides flipped riders over the edge of the pier. I want to reiterate that my visit took place entirely during the day. A lot of these boardwalk parks tend to come more alive at night as more people come in and the lights turn on. I can't speak to whether or not that's the case with Steel Pier, but I suspect it may be the case. So do I recommend visiting Steel Pier? If you're a coaster enthusiast seeking two extra credits, go for it. The park is an easy pit stop if you're traveling between Northern Jersey's boardwalk parks and Southern Jersey's boardwalk parks. It also isn't bad if you want to stop in to ride one or two things if you're in Atlantic City for a vacation. But if you're interested in spending a day in an amusement park, I would recommend driving to one of the other nearby amusement parks, like Six Flags Grey Adventure or Maury's Piers. Those parks have superior ride lineups and are better overall values in my opinion. So those are my thoughts on Steel Pier, one of several boardwalk parks in New Jersey. Have you been there? How do you think it compares to the other boardwalk parks in New Jersey? If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and consider subscribing because there will be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canby Coaster. Thanks for watching.